High school football holds a prominent place in the American lifestyle. But in the South, its grip on society is even more firm. It transcends words like tradition or pastime. Simply put, it is a way of life. A passion born in backyards and empty lots, nurtured under the lights of Friday night. It is father throwing to son, cousin tackling cousin, brother blocking brother. For all but a very gifted few, the pinnacle of this part hobby, part love affair is high school football. For 15 weeks every autumn, excitement inundates school hallways and cafeterias with a familiar feel. And while future stars throw Hail Marys behind the stadium, the current heroes, 10 years removed from those same pickup games, take the field. Every Friday night in towns across America, teams write another chapter in the story of their season. And for the St. Thomas More Cougars, 2004 looked to be the year that they would write the final chapters that had eluded them for so long. This is their story. Conventional wisdom says that preparation for a successful season begins when the team first takes the field for spring practice. But for the 2004 Cougars, preparation began months before as they slowly marched off the field in St. Martinville following a heartbreaking overtime loss. The team began a period of soul searching. Coach and player alike looked inside themselves to find the common identity that would make next season different. And as the short days of winter approached an end and the rejuvenation of spring drew near, the group of young men and coaches that would take the field in 2004 decided there was one thing they could not do without, toughness. If this team were to reach its goals, it would have to be the toughest in the history of a proud program. But toughness is not given freely, it is earned. At the high price of long hours and intense workouts, the Cougars began paying a price few teams could endure. Pound by pound and yard by agonizing yard, a debt was fulfilled and the promised reward became more and more evident with each passing day. This team, though picked to finish just third and fourth in one of the state's most competitive districts, had put itself in a position to accomplish more than any other team in school history. And though the sweltering heat of summer remained, the sounds of autumn began to resonate, and another season in pursuit of a dream began. by number 42 for the Cougars. Work snap, and it is going to be blocked. Taylor drops the pass. He's getting pressure, and he is going to be taken down for a huge loss. Whip it. Don't sit. Whip it. Here comes the blitz. He's looking for Collins. He's got him in the touchdown. 
Misdirected pitch to Taylor Tuchet. He's going to go. Touchdown, Taylor Tuchet. His second touchdown of the night. Huntley's his high quarterback draw. He's got room. He, he is digging and dagging and Huntley. He carries the ball. Another 16 yard run by John Huntley. He is fired up and rightfully so. He's looking for Connor and he's got a touchdown. Richard Connor. He loses pressure. He's looking for Richard Connor. Got him. He's and he's got, got him at the 40. And he falls forward to the 49 yard line. Throws it up for grabs. And it's intercepted by Carrico in the end zone. Taking a Class 5A powerhouse down to the final plays is no small task. But this Cougar team refused to believe in moral victories. They had not worked as long and hard as they did to accept a spirited defeat. And while critics wrote off Karen Crow's performance as down to STM's level, the Cougars set their eyes on a pair of contests with two other 5A opponents to make clear to everyone that their level had been raised. Tuchet on the top of the far side. He is going to walk into the end zone. Untouched. Taylor Tuchet. Don't hold tackle. Don't hold tackle him, boy. Oh, yeah, hey, man. Oh, yeah, hey, man. I know you hear me, too. I know you hear me, too. Don't read. He gives it to Tuchet. He breaks across the middle. He's across the middle. Very stable and speedy. Spins off one tackle. Inside the 40 yard line. Down to the 36. Taylor Tuchet is flat out fun to watch. Tackle, son! You better tackle! That's soft! Taylor Tuchet, he's got it at the 20. He barrels over a last and high defender at the 15 yard line. Taylor, boy, you're an animal tonight, baby. Damn, you all right, son? Cougars knocking on the door once again. Opted to Connor from the wide receiver position. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, he's sick, he's drilled at the 4. Good job, Rich. Taken by Richie Fowler at the 3. Drilled by Spencer Aber as he crosses the 20. Here is to Spencer Aber, he's going to walk. Here is to Joby Hill, and he is met in the backfield. Joby Hill meets number 99. McIver drops. He's looking for his receiver, he's looking for Doe Dream, and it is intercepted by the Cougars. He's going to cross it to his fullback, Spencer Aber, touchdown. Ball fumbled by McIver. He's in his own end zone. And that's going to be intentional grounding, and it's going to be a safety for the St. Thomas Ward defense. He's got Matt Juse, who is wide open. He's got blockers. He's at the 30. He makes a juke at the 25, down to the 20-yard line. Following two impressive wins against 5A teams that had given them trouble the year before, 
the Cougars enter district play at St. Martinville. The loss in the previous season's playoffs still a lingering memory. They entered the stadium with vengeance on their mind. Late in the fourth quarter, with the outcome still in question, the Cougars mounted an inspired drive that would put them up for good. The Cougars entered week five riding high on a potent offense that was capable of crippling an opponent with a lightning fast strike through the air or pounding it into submission with a dominant offensive line and a backfield stocked with thoroughbreds. But when Bro Bridge challenged, it would be the defense that would have to turn down an offensive onslaught in order to preserve a fourth straight victory. Hey, we gotta do our job, have faith in our offense. Over the next three weeks, STM would be met by little opposition, as the Cougar machine found itself firing on all cylinders. Quick flash to Kentucky Martin touchdown, St. Thomas Moore. He's looking for his receiver, and it's intercepted by Grant, putting the ball, and it's tripped by number 17, Ben Birdie, on the coverage of number 84. High snap, and it's tipped off, and it's intercepted by Grant, and it's tripped by number 35. Mr. Adrian, the flat, picked up a block, and he's got a, he's got a block, he's got one man to beat. 
Before the Cougars could wrap up district play at Northside, a final non-district opponent remained. When the Parkview Baptist Eagles marched into Cougar Stadium in Week 9, they were the top-ranked team in Class 3A. Boasting a reputation of dominance in every aspect of the game and a regular season winning streak that spanned two seasons, this was sure to be one of the toughest challenges yet for the Cougars. Fortunately, this team knew a thing or two about being tough. Direction to Touchet, he's got room, he's got the 50, he's got one man to beat. He's at the 40, the 35, the 30, he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick as it hits the left upright and bounces in. He's got his clock cleaned by one of the outside linebackers to see Thomas Moore. Second and seven, Huntley takes it, he's got room down the left side, touchdown! John Huntley, a 40-yard run by the senior quarterback! <laughs> Lennox drops the pass, heavy pressure from the outside, and Lennox is going to be sacked at the 32-yard line! Trickster! Hey, watch Trickster! Watch Trickster! Goose, I'm going now! Goose, I'm going now! Go for it, Harvey! Let's go! Get it, baby! That's it, Duck! That's it right there, good! Yes! Huge! Huge, baby! Huge! You gotta score! He's got Taylor Touche at the flat, the 25. He's gonna get first down yardage. You can hear the crowd right as he got past the first down marker. A huge first down pickup. Huntley drops the pass, he rolls, he's gonna tuck, now he's gonna find Connor, he's got Connor at the third, yeah. it's a foot race, the 20, the 10, yes, the touchdown, oh, yeah. Richard Connor, a 55-yard touchdown pass, 
pass from John Hundley to Richard Connor. And the Cougars reclaim the lead here at the 1030 mark of the fourth quarter, 16 to 14. He, make, he actually does the touch to David Armstrong, and he's going to be wrapped up for a loss of two on the play. And the Cougar defense does get the stand they were looking for. It's Clinics on the quarterback sweep, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He's going to drop the pass, and he's looking for his receiver. It's intercepted by Chris Lewis at the 36 yard line. He's at the 20, he's at the 10, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 10 yard line. After handing the Eagles their first regular season defeat in two years, the Cougars were reaping their reward for a preseason of nearly immeasurable work. A win over the undefeated crosstown rival Northside Vikings for solitary ownership of the district crown in what was being billed as the game of the year in 5-4-A would help give some measure to their sacrifices. Richard Connor takes it at the 8-yard line. He's out across the 20, the 30, the 40. He's past midfield inside Viking territory, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Taylor Touchette straight up the gut again. He breaks forward. He's in the 10, the 5, touchdown! Following their victory and district title claim, the Cougars were finally given the respect they had earned under the scorching heat of a summer sun, as they found themselves seated atop the Class 4A playoff bracket. But such pageantries did not interest a team whose eye was fixed on a much more coveted prize. Now, I don't know if you know this, but as a result of being the number one seed in the power ratings, they're going to give us six points for every touchdown we score. You know, and guess what? They give our opponents six points too. So you know what it means now? It means nothing. It means nothing. Yeah, Following a week of intense preparation, the Cougars began their playoff march against a Northwood team that would be blindsided by an offensive and defensive bombardment seeming to come from all fronts. Looking for Connor in the end zone. This time, touchdown! Watch this, watch it, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, Following an explosive performance on both sides of the ball, the Cougars look to set a school record for most consecutive wins against an East Ascension team that carried itself like it was the number one seeded team in the playoffs. If they wanted to continue their journey toward high school football immortality, the Cougars would have to set the record straight. Yes! Yes! Good job, Bo! That away, that away, baby, that away. They can't stop this. Let's go.
Now owning the record for most consecutive wins in school history, Coach Hightower's team set out to achieve what only two others in school history had, a semifinal berth. But before the sidelines of Cougar Stadium could be painted for its final game of the season, a trip to Slidell and a quarterfinal matchup with Sound awaited. Prior to the game's beginning, the Cougar faithful knew that a victory would mean a semifinal matchup at home the following week. And as the celebration began, word circulated throughout the crowd that their opponent would be the very same Northside team they had defeated in Week 10. If the regular season matchup between the Vikings and Cougars was the game of the year in District 5-4A, then this was to be the game of the decade. The week leading up to the semifinal contest was one of intense anticipation throughout the city. Never before had a team from Lafayette earned the right to play beneath the lights of the Superdome, and now it was guaranteed one would. This was the biggest game in Lafayette history. Thousands of fans from both teams attended, and 30 minutes before kickoff, the stadium far exceeded maximum capacity. As the rain predicted for Saturday poured down from a cold Friday night sky, the tension grew to a breaking point as the teams took their respective sides upon a 120-yard plot of dirt and grass that for the next 48 minutes would serve as the landscape for an epic battle between familiar foes. One of these teams had a date with destiny on the green carpet in New Orleans, but it was going to have to fight its way out of Lafayette first. The toss is to the far side to Keelan Williams. He cuts it upfield. It's a delayed draw by the quarterback. Ball on the ground. ground. The teams traded blows during their first possession, but neither was able to find much success on the offensive side of the ball during the first quarter. Then at the 9.33 mark of the second quarter, north side drew the first blow. They give up the gut to Keelan Williams, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Keelan Williams. 
After their next drive stalled at their own 41 yard line, the Cougars were forced to punt, and the defense would be called upon to make a big stand and give them the lift they needed. Third and eight. Keelan gets the carry, and Keelan's wrapped up. And this was the three and out St. Thomas Moore may have needed. Low That's snap, enough. balls on the ground, and it's going to be a safety by St. Thomas Moore. It is a safety. It wasn't even a block party. It was just a low snap, and that could be the momentum shift that St. Thomas Moore needed. After the safety, your score, north side six, St. Thomas Moore two, four fifty remaining until halftime. On the ensuing kickoff, senior Richard Connor would jumpstart the struggling offense with a return to the Vikings' 24-yard line. He's got a seam. He's got one man to beat. It's the kicker. He's at the 35, the 30, and he's knocked out of bounds. On a crucial third and six, the Cougars look to senior quarterback John Hundley with just 316 left in the game. It's going to be zone read. Hundley's going to keep. Hundley's up the gun. Right up the he's middle. at the five. Touchdown, John Hundley. 19-yard touchdown run by the senior quarterback. Touchet gets the carry. He's got room over the right side. He's got first down. On third and goal from the one-yard line, the Cougars look to senior tailback Taylor Touchet to punctuate their impressive 55-yard drive in the waning moments of the first half. The Cougars' late first-half explosion on both sides of the ball sent them into halftime standing tall atop a 16-6 lead. There they were, just 24 minutes away from the school's first-ever state final appearance. But if they were to retain or build upon their lead, they could not start the second half as sluggish as they had the first. He gets the toss. Cougars in the backfield. Keelan eludes him. He's got close to first down yard. Northside took advantage of St. Thomas Moore's miscues, stringing together a drive that would put them inside the Cougar five yard line as the third quarter neared an end. Keelan gets the carry, straight at the gut over the left side, and he's into the end zone, touchdown. No balls on the ground. There's going to be a discussion at the goal line. I don't think there's going to be a discussion. I think they're calling a touchdown. What an unbelievable play. It could have been a huge turn of events. Only fires. He's got Ben LeBlanc, huge catch nice. by Ben LeBlanc. Where they mark it, he's got a first down, and that was a big time catch. Huntley on second down, balls to the ground. Yeah. This time, Northside has it. Williams gets the carry. Williams has the first down and more. He's into the back defensive backfield. He's untouched. Keelan Williams' third touchdown of the night gave Northside a three-point advantage. But the Vikings' special teams would once again falter, leaving the Cougars within a field goal and tying the ball. Bad snap. This is huge. If they can tackle him, they do. So the Cougars are only a field goal behind after a second missed extra point. After the offense was unable to produce a first down on its ensuing possession, the Cougars were forced to punt. And with 3.30 remaining in the game, the defense that so many had questioned at the season's beginning took the field in its biggest series yet. Duffy keeps. Duffy's wrapped up at the 23. Quarterback sweep is going to be wrapped up and stopped by St. Thomas Moore. After the Viking punt, the Cougar offense found itself 48 yards away from the end zone and down by three with just 2.31 left in the game. 
as the Cougars began the final drive that they had no doubt acted out hundreds of times in their own backyards and on the playgrounds of their youth, the rains ceased. And for a moment, it seemed as if a destiny of maroon turf awaited them just 150 feet away. Hey, how bad do you want it? Let's go. Hey! Huntley drops. Huntley's looking across the middle. He's got Kentucky Martin, and he's down at the 34-yard line. There you go. A 14-yard pickup from senior to senior. Huntley drops the pass. He's flushed. He throws it out of bounds. That was a good throw away by John Huntley. Huntley on the zone read. He keeps, and he falls forward. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, the 34-yard line. So to bring up third and ten in an obvious passing situation for St. Thomas Moore. Humphrey rolls to the far side. He's got Connor complete. And Connor gets out of bounds at the 23-yard line. First down, St. Thomas Moore as the rain comes back. Huntley drops pressure from the far side. It sails when it's deflected in the line of scrimmage. A break for St. Thomas Moore. Go! Go! Huntley drops the pass. He's looking across. He's flushed out. He rolls to the near side. He's going to tuck it. He's going to run. He's going to try to get to the sideline. He's out of bounds at the 15 yard line. He'll be about three yards shy of a first down. Helping Steve Hernandez when it comes to, in terms of getting closer for that field goal to tie it up get this game in overtime. 19-16 again, folks, is our score with a minute 13 to go in the ball game. Northside leading St. Thomas Moore. Woo, woo, woo! Oh! Only out of the gun. Go! Third and four. Oh! He drops his lead across the middle, in and out of the hands of Pim LeBlanc, the 10. It would have been a first down. So it will be a 32-yard field goal for the senior place kicker. He will try to send this game to overtime if he can make it. Ball is up. The kick is up. And it is good! Steven Hernandez with a 32-yard field goal, and he just runs off the field like it's business as usual. St. Thomas Ward ties this game at 19. The Vikings' attempt to win the game devoid of overtime would fail as Chris Lewis intercepted a pass at the Cougar 10-yard line with 15 seconds left in regulation. We're going, we're going to flip a coin for possession. Okay, we're going to flip a coin for possession. Yeah, we want, we want, we want right, to be playing we'll later. Go back to yeah. Yeah. Go to feed to feed yeah. And we will be going in that way. The classic battle that had lived up to its billing in every way would need extra time to be decided. Following a coin toss won by Northside, Cougar offense took the field. Here we go, overtime for all the marbles, the 4A state championship to the Superdome. The Nokia Prep Classic Cougars first and 10 from the 10 yard line. Hey! Quarterback sweep to the right side, Huntley's got blockers, and now he's wrapped up, and he falls forward to about the seven yard line. Tushet gets the toss to the near side. He's got room and he trips up at the four yard line. Huntley's quarterback sweep, he slips and falls to five. Good hold and a good kick by Steven Hernandez. Keelan Williams gets the carry, he's hit at the line, he goes to about eight. It's a quarterback sweep, he's gonna be- Plus this play, plus this you better play. get him. You better get him, you better pursue him. And he's knocked out of bounds, knocked down. Williams gets the call straight up the gut, and he is wrapped up at the three-yard line. He does not get in. The snap is good, the hold is good, and the kick is good. good. Williams gets the call, he tries to bust it to the outside, and he's wrapped up at the eight-yard line. Duffy on the toss to Keelan Wiss, he cuts it upfield, and he cuts it back upfield, he walks it into the end zone for his fourth touchdown of the game. Keelan Williams, an eight-yard touchdown run, and now here comes the all-important extra point. This is important. If we can block this extra point, all we gotta do is score and take our extra point and win the ball game. 
Low snap, low hold. It's blocked. It's blocked by the Cougars. That's big. So another big extra point as Charlie gets a little excited here Woo. in the press box. The historic contest came down to this. Four plays, 10 yards, and a trip to New Orleans. The third and goal from the eight. Somebody drops the pass. He's flush, now he runs. He's looking. He takes. Oh, Intercepted. No. The Cougar season comes to an end after a interception on a rollout. The interception was by big number 90 for the Northside Vikings, and the celebration is on. Jared Shaw, the defensive tackle, came up with the interception, and St. Thomas Moore goes down to Northside 28-22. to The most vivid images of a high school athlete's career are those final moments. As a freshman walking onto the practice field for the first time, that moment, the finality of it all, seems decades away. And as a senior walking off the playing field for the last time, that moment will remain a vivid image forever in his mind. Yet it is not those final moments that dictate the career of a high school athlete. Rather, it is the years of hard work, the hours of preparation, and the bonds of brotherhood that have the most profound impact on his life. Because for every minute of execution on the playing field, there were hours of groundwork laid out behind the closed doors of a weight room or in the quiet serenity of an empty stadium. And while the conclusion of a high school athlete's career can take only an instant, the brotherhood formed and the lessons learned will remain with him for a lifetime.